I, what would I do without you guys? <laughs> hey, Leah, remember to glaze. Yes, remember to glaze. <laughs> and remember to use turquoise. Um, mm-hmm. So one of the most important things to remember about perspective is that really what it's about when we're talking about drawing and painting is translating three dimensions, which goes out like this onto a flat surface, right? So because the flat surface doesn't go back, we have to change the way our shapes look on that. And so you have to understand that there's no uh, more important uh, point at which this is happening. And so that's the thing that people struggle, struggle to wrap their mind around. Right, it's hard to understand something that we think is doing one thing when in fact it is doing something else on the flat surface. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look here. Some of you have seen me do that. Hey, wait, where's my spotlight? Ah, here we are. So. Oh, get off my water. Kitty, get off the water. All right, so tell me, is this, where is the pencil uh on the cup on the in on the cup is it closer <gasps> to us is it farther away where is it middle, middle. <laughs> yes you have seen this before does it look like it's in the middle no oh, please let's no look. it looks like more towards <sighs> me actually yes so look at what happened can you see that did you guys see that so if I move this so that I'm looking exactly over it, it's exactly in the middle. So one of the things you have to get with perspective is that when you're drawing something and you're looking at it at a certain angle, there are sides. So these are equal halves. These are equal halves, but they don't look like equal halves when you draw them. Got that? Does that? intellectually makes sense. So it's, and, and it's a little bit like this. Hold on. It's a little bit like what happens here. Oh, I can hear you. Right? We all learned how to draw this road when we were kids. This does not, it's not hard for us to figure out, right? We, we learned it. And, but one of the things we know about the road is that if you think about it, it actually isn't smaller here than it is here. It just appears smaller. And the road does not rise up, literally rise up, right? The road is flat on the ground, but it doesn't appear to be that way when we're looking at it and when we're trying to depict it on a flat surface. So notice that as things go away from you, they get smaller and they grow, they get smaller and they raise, they rise higher. So a lot of people, it's the same thing with the cube, this concept of the cube, right? We all learned how to draw a cube when you were in school. These are all the same size. This cube means that these are all the same size, but they don't look the same size. In fact, they don't appear the same size to us when we draw them, right? This is smaller. And if you'll notice, it's kind of rising up. This is smaller and it's going at the top and it's kind of going to the side. So when you're working with like a flat surface, the only thing we have to convey depth is to get shapes right and to kind of know what happens to a, a shape as it goes back away from us. So that's what we're gonna be practicing today. We're actually gonna be looking at a totally different, and uh, Jessica, anything to add to that before we go um, on to the lesson? Well, you wanna know where your eye level is. Yes, Always. we talked about that. Cause it's, it's yeah, and then um, everything, like your, your, lines and your vanishing points, depending on where the eye level is, it's, it's how you can establish like why things will go back in space the way they do. Yes, yes, very well said. So anyway, just a little preview of what you're going to get. And uh, I never got this training. So I have it in little pieces in my head. Uh, I think Jessica knows more about this uh, than I do uh, in terms of how to explain it and how to uh, understand it. So uh, I want you guys, uh, as many of them as you can, as many of you as you can to come to this, uh, but also pay attention to the lesson here. So hold on, I'm gonna move over here. Everybody has seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
You're a devil. Yeah. Hold on, I need a devil. Who's being a devil? Yeah, he's rabbit. <laughs> he's, he stepped in my water, then he stepped on my clean paper, and now he's playing with my brushes. Sounds familiar. <laughs> okay, so let's switch over here. Still been playing with the light a bit. Does anybody have questions about that concept or does it make sense to you? Does, does anybody think like, wow, that actually, wait a minute, who are you? Move the spotlight. I can't find myself here, hold on. Ah, oh, there we are. Here we are, Galaxy Tab. So when we are, we're going to start with a pretty, uh, we're going to, I don't want anybody to rush on this drawing. We're going to start with the drawing fairly loosely. And uh, we are not going to, I really love the way the light falls on this. It really shows very distinctly all the different sides. Um, first question, where is the light coming from? From the right. What direction is it coming from? Yeah. Nobody? Right from, from what right. direction is this light coming from? Oh, wait, did I? From right. From the right, from the right bottom and it's going up, right? So notice what happens with a, a cylindrical object that has a, a top, right? That has that, a, a side that's open, like a cup. Notice that while the light side on the outside of the cup when it's coming from the right is, uh, is light. Notice that the light side on the inside of the cup is on the opposite side. Can you see that? So that is always true. Uh, also uh, to bring up what something Jessica pointed out, what direction are we looking at from the, this cup? What angle are we top. looking at it? Yeah, we're looking down at it, right? So that's gonna change uh, some things for us. So I'm gonna start by giving us I'm going to start by showing you. Let's see. By the way, you know how you can't see the handle? Yes. You only see half of it. Yes. We don't try to paint the part we can't see, right? Which is exactly. black. Exactly. Yes, okay. Sandra, A plus. Yes, yes, I was going to get there. I was going to absolutely get there. And that's exactly my, that is exactly what I was going to point out. Sorry, I'm trying to find the marker that will show up here. You know what, I will draw this, I'm gonna move this, yes. So this is what Sandra pointed out is, this is what's called a lost edge. Oops, darn it, darn flashing. Here we are, right? So it's a lost edge, meaning we can't really see the, dif this, the difference. It'll, it's, uh, the, our, the lost edge starts here. It's dark up here, but the lost, we can see the edge. We can see where the edge meets the light. But as soon as we get down into the shadow, we kind of lose that edge, we lose that edge. Let me move this. Let's look at the, I wanna look at the dark one, the photocopy, the black and white, so we can really look at values. <clears throat> so if we were to it's label- too high, Leah. Yep, yep, I gotcha, I see. There we are, how's that? Yeah, that's perfect. So <clears throat> if we were to label values, this, would definitely be a five. Is there anything else that would be a five on the value scale? The darkest? Maybe here. Yeah, five. Maybe that's like a four. This is five. Okay. If you look here, you'll see that this is four. You'll be able to see it. You can see it a little bit better here. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. There's actually a line. Oh, yeah, that's Take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can see it a little bit better. My printer is running out of ink, so it might be. So actually we have this kind of cool set of shapes, kind of like little triangles here. This is how we're gonna start sketching. Um, also notice the halfway point is like, oh, I'm gonna use a different color for this. Let me try blue, see if you can see that. I'll take a picture of this, of course. The halfway point is about here on the cup. That's hard to see, hold on, red. Here's the halfway point of the cup, right? That means that if I was looking at this from the top, this side and this side would be equal. So this is right. the halfway point. 
You can tell because of a handle. Yeah, you can kind of line up exactly. You can kind of line up with the handle and then see. There's a couple of other ways you can tell too. One is that you can see that this side, and I'm gonna sketch this out for you in a second, is kind of narrower and it angles more, up more. And this side comes out a little heavier. I'm gonna do something to help you guys with your circles. So you will see a lot of people do this. Let's see. I see a lot of people who know a lot about drawing make this mistake all the time. Coffee cup. Have you made that mistake? <laughs> right, this is a mistake. Here is the mistake. The mistake is that they assume that these sides are equal right? And that this coffee cup, which sits flat on the table, is going to look flat on the table. In reality, this is what's happening. Can you see that? So this is much narrower. This side is always going to be a little bit wider. And the other thing that's happening is that the coffee cup, we, I'll show it to you on here. There are actually sides to this coffee cup. So you'll see that the front side is flat. We're used to thinking about sides with cubes. We're not used to thinking about sides with, with rounded edges, but sides also have rounded edges. This is a side. So the side, just like everything else, goes up, becomes more narrow. Got it? So always coffee cups look like they're rounded and always this edge is this back part, although it's a halfway point, doesn't look like it's halfway. That looks a little better, doesn't it? So let us, so I think we've got five here. We've got a four. There's five in here, which we should mark. And then if we're not looking at the design, would we call this like a three? I think we call that a three. And I think we call this a two. And I think from here to here, it's like a three. And here is like a two. I'm labeling these so you can see it. And then of course we've got the, and then here's a one, here's maybe a, here's a maybe a two. This might be a one. This is a one, this is a two, this is a one. So I want you to be, as we start to sketch out our coffee cup, you're gonna be paying attention to these values and these shapes. Let me take a picture of this so you can really see it. <laughs> so hold on here. Oh yeah, here we go. Has anybody not seen our source on the WhatsApp thread? You've all got it, right? Yes. <clears throat> okay, here we go. There it is. Okay, so when I draw a coffee cup, particularly at this angle, I like to do this. I'm gonna put this here so we can see it. We'll put this here as close as I can. Up a little bit. We're gonna start with our pencil. I like to actually start with this side, this back side. So let's see. I, instead of doing one curved line, I don't know if you see what I'm doing here. I'm breaking this into uh, sort of straight lines that intersect. And then later I can soften that curve. 
so that I see where this is. Can you guys see that? Because I am like, here, I want to move this. Let me know if you, oh, wait, I see. I need to move it a little bit this way. Here we go. Uh huh. So we start like this, and then I'm going to use this that I've established here to kind of measure my other shapes. So for one, I'm going to look here and see that uh, this comes out like maybe one and a half. Right. Right. So I'm going to come here, come down, and mark about here where I think the end of the cup is. See how I did that? I went one. And then I came down here. So this is the, my fingers are at the same distance that was here. I'm marking that off and then I can see it's another halfway point to the edge of the cup. So I'm really focusing, my edge needs to come up a little bit. So that when I, I come down, I'm gonna scoot over just a little bit more. We'll take a look at the shadow in a second. I really want you to, let's focus on this cup. So notice, this is me getting you guys away from the grid. And then I'm going to try this thing again. Mm, there we go. Kind of out a little bit more. Line, line, almost like a hexagon. Line comes down a little bit, line and line. And then I'm gonna check those measurements. So let's see, one, yep. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I check it this way, how wide. So if this, this distance is wider than what's happening here, so see how I'm using, so I've established this, we've established this measurements now, and now I have it to use for everything else. Do you guys, you guys want a second to catch up? The next thing I'm going to establish is my height. So I'm going to, I have a couple of things to do with this. I can use this line, which I put in. So see how I'm measuring with my pencil? And uh, it's a little bit higher. So this line from one end of the cup to the other is a little bit higher. See that? Than my cup. So if I want to do that down here, I can come here kind of line up my pencil here with the racer part up above the lid. And then I know where my bottom is, my base is. Did you guys see how I did that? I could also try this. I could try the measurement from the top of the cup to the bottom of the mouth of the cup. Uh, that's an easier measurement. This is about equal. One, two, see that? So the distance from here to here uh-huh. Yeah, it's about equal to the distance from here to here. So I found I've used this to help myself establish some guidelines. Let's sketch these lines. Now, if I want to see where the front of the cup is, it's really here. You don't have to sketch all these lines in, but I'm sketching them for you so you can see them. This is the front, right? And I can see that because this part is flat here. One, and then over here is the side. If I wanted to, I could even check like, what is the length of this? Aha, look at that. The length of this side from the edge going down to here. It's the same, a little bit 
longer, not too much, longer than the width of the cup. So I can come here, get that measurement. Notice how I'm letting my eraser drift a little bit far. Come here and then I can mark that spot. Don't, don't let anybody tell you that you can't connect the dots in drawing. It actually really helps <laughs> to find the sort of outer proportions of things rather than to guess. Um, then I can draw this line down, right? And then just about here. I also notice that this kind of comes in at an angle a little bit. It's not exactly straight. It comes in, gets a little, it's a little bit wider up here. It comes in a little bit. I also know that I might keep correcting this, but that because I'm structuring it this way, the corrections aren't gonna break the rest of my drawing. If that makes any sense. Paint on here. Right. So I know that this bottom, it's almost like these are separate rectangles. All right, now let's deal with the handle, which is always really tricky. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it, because it's, it's yeah. a little bit in front, isn't it? It's not completely at the back. Yeah, but don't think like that because that'll that's, confuse you, yeah, right? That's don't think like me. that, that will confuse you. I'm gonna sketch in cause I can see it kind of where it is. Here, I'm gonna take a picture so you guys can see this. Hold on. Take a picture so you can really see. Once again, we're gonna handle it with the outside shapes. There it is. You can really see it here, right? So I know where the edge of the cup is. It's here. I can do that. So now I can check and see. You can see it in here too. It's right here. This is kind of the edge. Notice the handle comes in a little bit. It doesn't sit on the edge of the cup. It kind it's of comes sweet. in a little bit from that side. But I can draw this side down and then use this to measure. And I can find it different ways to see, ah, look at that. If I measure from here to here, from the edge of the cup to the edge of the, of the handle, that's about the same distance as here to here. Can you see that? One, yep. Not the whole handle, because the handle comes in a little bit. But from so the from edge of the just cup. Just the part that sticks out. Yeah, from the part that sticks out. Look at that. Oh, so great. So I'm going to come here <laughs> and mark that. So I have that outside edge. It's so helpful, isn't it, to have the dang outside edge? It's like great. All right. And then once again, I'm going to draw this up from here and a little tiny bit up like I see here. And then I'm going out and then up and then kind of flat like this. I'm, I'll get the shape of this later. And this kind of comes up towards this top. Well, a little bit you, lower. How did you establish where it was from the bottom? Uh, I looked here to see that when I give myself an angle up, then there's a tiny little line here like okay. this, and then it starts, right? And I'm gonna remember that my handle comes in here like this. So this is really just the, and I might bring this up just a little bit. What I'm paying attention to is like kind of how much space there is between the handle here and here. So I can see. So I might adjust my mouth, the lid of my cup. See that? So that's how we start to sketch that in. 
Uh, the candle will always feel too big because it's very close to us. Another rule about foreshortening is that as things come closer to us, they become um, they become more uh, they become bigger. So right, just like this side is bigger than this side, even though we know they're so we know intellectually these are the same size. They are. In physical, if you look at this cup from the, if this cup is like, you're looking at this cup right in front of it, these are the same size, but they do not look the same size. So let's get you to there. I want you guys, I'm gonna take a picture of this and then I'm gonna want you to send over to me your drawings before we get into the inside stuff. Let's see here, can I get those? Yep, perfect. There we go. Um, one of the things I'm going to check, I'm checking yours, Olga. Looks pretty good. Yep. This looks pretty good. I think your I think your um, handle Olga has to come out a little bit farther. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yep. It's funny. Intellectually, you want to make the handle smaller yeah, or so. narrower because it's not the thing that we want to focus on, right? But in this particular angle, we really have to see that shape. Good job, Anik. Anik, this is too square. Look at the shape. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's more I'm like a, to work on it a, a little bit. Yeah, it, you need I to bring it to... out a little bit. I think, oh, I know what the problem is here. One, mm -hmm. hold on. Uh, well, actually one, two, this is okay. You may want to bring the mouth up a little bit, this part of the big side up just a touch, although maybe not. It's, I think it, it, it's, it's okay, but I think something, yeah, bring this out. It's more like a hect hectagon. Mm -hmm. Kind of comes at an angle more like this. What's good? All right. Good job. This feels weird at first, and then later you'll be like, this, why would anyone? Okay, Emma, there's something off here. I'm going to check it. One, two. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, Emma, is this, it's this one. So, uh, here's where it is. Here, Emma, yours, if you look and see, this should be the same distance from here in the center of the cup down here. Yours is too short. Can you see that? This needs to, this bottom needs to come down. The mouth is okay, but you need to, from here to here, this needs to be the same distance. So this needs to come down a few centimeters really. And then that, and then you need to correct, that will help you correct what's happening here. You have this kind of lopsided thing happening because this is too short. John. Good job, you guys. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it doesn't look right. I'm sending it to you so you Send can tell me. Send it over. I'll let you know. It's often not what we think. I corrected it, but it's still wonky. It's wonky. Let's take a look. Oh, I can see. What's it's wrong. funny. You took a picture and now you know. <laughs> no, just looking through the, to the through viewfinder, I can tell. <laughs> okay, send it over. Um, Let's see what we can do it. here. Yeah, it very often helps to take a picture. It really just, does. I find just looking through a viewfinder is just straight away. I could tell that the, the, ra the right. round at the top is smaller than the round at the bottom. Well, the round at the top should be smaller. Well, okay. So let me see what you're talking about. Uh, it's too I'll tell you more. Let's see. Okay, Rashmi. All right, so same issue, Rashmi. This is too, okay, so Rashmi, your issue is that this line is too long. 
Okay. This needs to come up a little bit, right? And then you're going to notice this is more, this is straight and this comes out mm -hmm. at an angle more. So you're having problems with this shape. It's one, two, yep, that's right. One, two, one, two, yeah, uh, yes, one. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So this one is, um, this one's the right size, but this is too long. And you'll see that'll help you. And then let me, I'm just gonna use another measurement, which is to kind of check the width of the cup using this length. Let's see, just out of curiosity. So now, all these measurements you can use, ah, interesting. So if I go from here to here, this should be right where the handle starts. So let me check and see if that's happening with mine. Yep, for the most part, yes. Yep, yep. So handle comes in this far. So the other thing that's happening Oh yeah, here's your real problem, Rashmi. Your mm -hmm. real problem is this isn't wide enough. Yeah. So look at this, when I measure this, when I take this line and I measure to mm -hmm. here, this should come to the edge of my cup. When you do that here, mm -hmm. see, you need to bring this out farther. You have okay. it in here like this, this line needs to come out farther. Oh. Somehow you made this too narrow. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, the struggle is real. Linda, what's this rounded stuff? <laughs> I might let you get away with it. Here, hold on. I'm going to check. Okay. At least that looks it looks good. right. No, it does not. Oh. It doesn't look like the shape <laughs> at all. Okay. So I Linda, did. yours needs to be a um, yours needs to be a little bit wider here too. Mm -hmm. So I'm just checking, checking yeah, right? Well, this well, needs to well, come well. out a little bit. So otherwise looks pretty good, except the, well, I'm not gonna fight it. Here we go. I'm gonna make you really like uh, spell out this shape though on your others. Otherwise, okay. very good. Annika, okay. Annika, you have this going down. See that? Yeah. I'm having this problem, it needs to come out more. That's the okay. first thing. Number two, okay, that's big. These, I think all those other proportions are, are better. Yeah, everything else. Um, this uh, is, uh, this cup isn't long, this handle isn't long enough too. Okay. There's a tiny little area, a little edge here. I know it's a little hard to see on the screen. See that? It's like really here. Okay. And then up here is the angle of where it starts. You have it kind of floating in the middle like that. All right, good job, you guys. Can hard you work. Explain, please, you? I haven't seen yours, where is it? It's, it's oh, I see, it came in, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sideways. Yeah. I think the, the line is not lined up with a handle, I think is the problem. Uh, there's a lot of problems. <laughs> so let's start at the beginning. Um, let's start at the beginning. And Sandra, this is like the only problems you have right now are these problems, right? In your work, I can tell you this will get a lot better. Number one, one, two, three, one. I see that you, uh, I think the biggest problem is that lion is the wrong place, right? Uh, yes, first of all, your hand, oh, I see, you've just drawn, it, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. You've just drawn the part of the handle you can see. You haven't drawn the part that disappears, right? Right. Um, so a couple of things are happening. Number one is you're coming out too far. So yours is going like this, right? Your angle is coming down like this, which right. is bringing it out like this. And, and really, yes, so this is, that's it. Yep. So what this is, this line, you have this line in to, um, in to, uh, in too far. Your line is like this. That's where it I is. wasn't sure where to make that line depart from. Well, it should be, it's because you've drawn a round circle and really you should have an angle here. I, I, like I, but this. I did have angles to start with. Yeah. Well, go back to that angle because this comes out and it really, it's up here. So what you have is this. 
Right. And then you have it winding down like here, but really it needs to come out here and come up higher like that. See that? Okay. That's what you got. Nina. Hmm. I think Nina, uh, well, it's funny. Even I look at it and I'm like, eh. So Nina, you're, you're uh, I think you're one, two, let's see, one, two. So you did the same thing that Sandra did, Nina. You have something round here and the shape isn't right. So I want you to go back to shaping this flat. Really look at how I'm drawing this. See? Um, so you have your edge here. Uh, it, I know it's hard to see here, but this right edge here is too close in. It needs to come out. This is not, you have this happening and then going yeah. down like that. But really there needs to be this angle out and then, the, and then the edge comes up to here. So that is the biggest problem that you've got going on. As well, you've got this happening down here. Really mm -hmm. it's more angled out like this. So this is why I'm telling you guys, deal with your curved lines by putting in sharp edges. You can get rid of this later when you have everything in the right place, but notice how much it's screwing you up because you can't really see the edges of the thing. Now, later I can kind of soften that. I can take my eraser and cut, see how I can do that later. But if you're gonna try and draw this round thing too soon, you're gonna miss. What's happening is you're treating this as one edge and really there's like one, two, three, four, five <laughs> sides, sides to this cup, even though you can't see them very well. Good job, you guys. This is the struggle. This is the struggle. All right, let's see. Natalia. Looks good, Natalia. Good job. Rashmi, much better. Do you see how that helped, Rashmi? Yeah. So you were doing the same thing well, as these other guys. You were like, you kind of um, rounded, you didn't come out enough, right? So this came mm -hmm. down and then you started your edge too early. Uh, to be fair, I did not give you guys a measurement for that because I just kind of did that automatically. All right. For those could of you, you who have got- Could you have a look at mine as well? Where is yours? Where is it? Yours? Where is it? Uh, I've sent it to you again, it's too Ah, uh, Needy, I see it, I see it. Okay, so Needy, this is two. Okay, so this looks good. One, two. This angle isn't, you have your angle going like that. It okay. needs to come up more. See that? It has to come okay. up much more. Um, other than that, I think you're in good shape. Yep. Good job using every measurement. Everything else looks good. So this angle has to come up higher. Other than that, you're good. Okay. Nice job. Uh, Emma, that looks better. Oh yeah, significantly at better. Emma, do you see that? Do you see how much that correction really helped you? Good job. Great corrections. I'm, I'm way happier with corrections. Natalia, Rashmi, good. Sandra, mm -hmm. good. Good, good, it looks good. Wrong. Um, you're, you have this, you, you're doing this. I can't right? see the right edge. I can't see on, on, on um, your paper. You're doing that. You're doing, this is out a little too far. Come oh, in okay. a little bit. It's just too far out. Because the bottom, the bottom right and the bottom left doesn't look the same. Yeah, and this should come up just a little bit more. And okay. this should also come up at a little bit more of an angle. Um, but good job, you guys. Let's see. Yay, there you go. Much better, 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 better. Okay, anybody else want me to take a look? Or are we gonna ready to add in our other shapes so, here? How do you make sure that it, well, mine looks wider, too wide? I mean, not tall enough and wide. Well, what tools did I give you? What tools did I give you, you to figure it's that the out? Width, the width of a cup is the same as the height from the hedge. Is that right? Uh, no, the width of the cup, like I, I took this measurement, uh, the width of the cup from the edge to the inside edge of the handle, if you look at this, it comes to here, the inside edge of the handle, where the handle comes in. See that? Not to the edge. So the width of the cup should be, 
here. And in fact, I should bring my cup out just a little bit. So that looks right, but the height then vis-a-vis -vis the height. Well, you just check it on the source. I, I don't, which height? Okay. <laughs> like, the the height from the edge. Is you gotta show, you gotta show, from what? From here to here? No, yeah, be, from there, no, from, from there to the bottom of the cup where you would drink, yeah, if you picked it up from where you would drink. To here. Yeah, from these here should to here, the the, these should be equal. Oh, okay. In the middle, these should be equal. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay, so they are, okay. Yeah, okay. they are. So it's better than you think. All right, so now let's start adding in some of these twos. There's a tiny little bit of froth in here. I think that's like a three. And then notice how I'm using Here's my, uh, there's my four. So here's my three, my four, my five, and my two. And then up here is a little bit, uh, maybe this is more like a four, not a five. There's a little bit of shadow there. And you'll notice that here it's lighter. And of course, here on the top, We've got a lighter. The edge gets darker here and lighter here. Uh, you know what? I think I need to draw that on the outs. Do I need to draw that down? down? Hold on. So I need to do this. So when we talk about right brain and left brain, this is what we're talking about. Which one is which? Right brain is the visual spatial. It's looking at things as shapes and not what they're called and not what you think they should, not your concept of them. It's what's actually happening. The left, the, left one brain, is the, the left brain is trying to tell you that something is happening that is not happening. And then here we've got, let's see. Here we've got this light shape. So I, it's like an angle up to here. And then watch this. It's like a curve line down to about there. What I'm really doing is I'm drawing this negative shape space shape here, which is flat on the bottom and curved on the top. Comes in on the bottom on this side. This comes in further. And then this comes in at an angle like that. Fun, huh? <laughs> and then beyond that, there's this. Oh, damn you, coffee handle. <laughs> Here we go. So, and then this is where the coffee handle disappears. So I know I'm working within that. Start with this shape here, then you can bring it in and over, then start with this inner light. Here, I'm going to do this with a marker and send you a close up so you can really see it. Let's see. Let me send this over to you. Uh, the, the great news is it's pretty easy to paint this thing once we get it drawn. Like you're going to enjoy that a lot more. Uh, let's see. I'm going to take a close up of this so you can really, the handle, so you can really see what's going on there. Can you see these lines?
while you guys are drawing, I'm going to come in and hold on a second. I'm going to go get a little bit more coffee. Hang on. It's a, it's a two cup day. I just thought you'd like to see Hermes sleeping like a little dork. <laughs> Where? I just sent it on the thread. <laughs> uh, here comes here comes my cat. She's start gonna start oh, wow. terrorizing my me soon. You know, um, he needs a bigger bed, Leah. Yeah. You're crazy, Julia. I'm so glad, Nina, come back to us whenever you can. You know the video will be up if you can't. Um, for those of you who are finished, we can, let's, I'm gonna do this for a second so you can see it. We of course can also add in the shadow, which has these, I somebody took a series of these on the free website that I use. And I just think they are the gorgeous. I love this. This to me is the essence of coffee in the morning. You know what I'm saying? It's like so coffee. It's so coffee. <laughs> right? Look at him. He's just like. He's, he needs a bigger <laughs> bed. He's spinning out of his bed. He is. <laughs> he is. He does. He's just so huge. <laughs> All right. So you know at the top? Yeah. So what we're top? putting the shadows, but I'm having to make those proper circles because there's a rim and if we don't put the rim- Yeah, it's now, you get no the circle, the now you get the circle in, but you use okay, good. the, yeah, you use that shape, but now, but you know, you gotta, get, gotta make sure your circle shape is right. That's another right? thing. Right? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the rub. As we say, that is the rub. So I use these shapes to kind of shape my outer circle. And this will probably continue. You can see mine is still a little bit um, cubed out. I'll be changing that. later and here's the really confusing thing this line here is just goes away right this is the light side this is here and then we can't really see the other so to me we're going to practice mixing grays and i think you guys are going to enjoy this you get choices you get choices with the grays did i get that right Yep. Okay. background color of mine do you think looks best? OK, 
Hey, you guys, and right now I want you to stop what you're doing for a second and wish Jean Tate luck. She is in a job interview right now. She's one of two people wow. left. So let's all sit and think right now. Jean, get Jean. the job. Jean. Success. You know, it's also Janet's birthday. It is? Mm -hmm. oh, Happy shit. birthday, Janet. Damn it, Janet. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I got it. I should have paid better. I am a bad friend. I should have paid better attention to that. Uh, I don't think Janet thinks you're a bad friend. I know. I know she doesn't. She's awesome. But that's what yes, makes Janet is. a great friend. <laughs> she's, <laughs> a, she's really low maintenance. <laughs> She's pretty great. Yeah. yeah and for those is. of you who have worked with, I mean, she's an amazing editor too. Really, really wonderful. All right. Anybody? Let's see. What am I missing here? Ah, Diana, that's really coming along. That's a super green, green background for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That kind of, uh, that's nice, soft, uh, grayish khaki green. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Had, I just had to try another one. Huh? I know what you mean. It's interesting. And you know why? Because his little curls are so red. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I went with green from the beginning. And then I thought maybe, maybe I'll pop more with a, he has a lot of yellow in him and an orange too. So now I'll go with the green. I I kind of agree. I just wanted to check with the group. Thank I you. think it's good. It's good to see it. And mostly teal is the right answer. <laughs> so <laughs> but most of the time, teal is the right answer, <laughs> but not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's like, teal's always the right answer. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> she's she's like are you crazy <laughs> i do put it in everything um kind of intentionally yeah it's beautiful even color. though you can't necessarily always tell because i might mix it in or it's subtle but right. it's always it's like my thing it's my like thing. in the zorn palette it's a it wonderful did improve the zorn palette i it did. didn't improve it oh i'm very proud of that that is that did improve the zorn palette i think so I told Simon on Wednesday. Oh yeah. And um how's Simon doing? Is he doing all right? Hanging in there? Yeah, yeah, he's 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 hilarious as always. Um we've been listening to Woodhouse for figure drawing, which is super hilarious. It's wonderful. But yeah, so I told him, I said, Hey Simon, I'm gonna hesitatingly think you might appreciate this. You know how he is. <laughs> I improved the Zorn palette. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, how? I'm like, I put turquoise in it. And he paused and he said, yeah, I can see that. That would work. <laughs> yep, that would work. All right. I'm not going to totally reject that idea out of hand. Oh, the last thing we'll want to mark in is you'll see here this side is a little bit more shadowy. And in one or two places in here, we've got some exceptional shadows. So from here to here, it's like, it's very dark, it's a five. And then from here to here, and then this is a five as well. Here to here, it's gonna be like a three in value. All right, anybody else want me to look at their, are you fit, let's see. Yeah, pretty good, Rashmi. Something looks, uh, is it off? I think this needs to come down a little bit. This line needs to come down. Okay. Yeah. It looks a little bit lopsided, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, Linda, you're gonna, okay, Linda, shape. Pay attention to shape here, honey. I mean, I know you want to round this because cups are round. No, 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 no. I realized it when I sent the picture, actually. <laughs> well, that you're like, I'm like, hey, pay attention here. And then get yeah. these guys in because it'll help you. 
But do you think it's the, the, uh, the, the right distance is yes, the right distance the, for sure. Um, how do I explain this? So I just have to lower this, the part of the handle, but the base it's in the correct place or the, not even that? The base is in the correct place. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep. Thank you. Needy. <laughs> Needy, this looks, this still looks a little, uh, I see what the problem is. You have your line going up here like this. Okay, which is causing problems mm -hmm. with your cup. Break, you need to bring your line down more at an angle like this. When you do that, you're going to be able to get these shapes better placed. So right now your cup looks like it's squashed up at this very weird angle. So redraw your line a little bit more down, not like this, but down more like that across and then redraw these and that'll help um other th otherwise it looks good uh sandra the bottom looks wider than the top yeah but it has to be a little narrower so you need to bring your just bring your lines in a little bit like this on either side so you have it actually coming out like that slightly so angle them in okay mm -hmm. Um, checking on those. Checking your. Okay, Annika, you're having a little bit of the same problem that Needy is. You're not. Your this angle needs to come down a little bit. You have it up here, which is affecting these shapes. Also, uh -huh. notice how far down that you have your shape like this. That four here is like uh -huh. this and really it needs to come down also this needs to come up more your handle looks great so these okay. need to be way more angled up you have them like this okay and like that so yeah fix that. you guys are getting there doing good All right, I am going to start talking about good Rashmi. That looks good. All right, so I'm going to start talking about uh, mixing. Um, essentially, we're going to be mixing a gray today, and we're going to play with different colors to see what works, right? And you get to make decisions. So I'm going to show you my three favorite gray mixes. up here, let's see. All right, we've got, you'll probably recognize this one because I do it quite a lot. The first gray mix is going to be... Burnt Sienna. Ha <laughs> ha, close. It could be Burnt Sienna. I was gonna burnt say, uh, let's say Burnt Sienna actually. I like that better. I was gonna say Burnt Umber, but you know what? Let's say Burnt Sienna, you're right. You're right. See, you know my, oh wow. And what, an indigo? Uh, I've got oh. ultramarine blue. Ultramarine. Good job. See, Sandra, that's where you're a natural. The colors make sense to you. And Not you remember really. them. You do good with that. And I can't find my bursting on it. What did I do with it? Where is it? Where is it? Hold on. I'm going to pull this up. Sometimes I can't see. Ah, here it is. So I will write these down, don't worry, as I lay them out. So this is the first pair, burnt sienna and, uh, sorry, uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. The second pair is going to be, I think we've done this one before too. It's going to be viridian green and alizarin crimson. Where's my alizarin crimson? There it is. is alizarin crimson fugitive? What, what do you, what? Is it what? Is alizarin crimson fugitive? What do you mean? It's borderline. It's so it's borderline. It's what? it has to do with the light fastness. Um, I've I have never heard that term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does Fugitive it mean? Means it means it it's means not it's light fast. Not resistant to light. Right. Ah. So um, color. here's the thing with alizarin. It's a yes and it's a no. So it's not the most light fast, and it does have. Um, like people will tell you that, like it's 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 not life fast. That being said, I have paintings with alizarin in them that are 
very, very old. And I know people who've been painting with alizarin for decades and their paintings look fine. So it's slightly fugitive. Is it as light fast as other pigments? No, it's, it's not. And for that reason, there are painters who won't use it. Um, you can get a substitute alizarin. I think I have one around here. I could, it's a gambling. I, I, I have no issue with alizarin. I think it's a great color. Um, alizarin. And it's not, there are some pigments like, like, um, like a real rose matter, which is the, like the most amazing red and pink ever. That is not light fast and it will fade. Um, so just, I don't think you should worry about your alizarin. I really don't. I think I, and that's, that sort of seems to me like, so you guys get that? That is like, oh, here we are, sorry. Um, the concept is that some, uh, some colors will fade. Uh, uh, that okay. makes sense to me with uh, alizarin, uh, alizarin, sorry, alizarin, 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 because I think of alizarin as one of those neutral colors that kind of does all these different things. It's a very versatile color. It can be both warm, it can be cool. All right, the last one, you have options on how to make it. If you have a dioc, if you have a dark purple, like a dioxazine purple, you can use it. If you don't, like me, I'm using Quinn red and phthalo blue. Hold on. So that will make my purple. And then I'm gonna use yellow ochre as my yellow. So what am I doing here? What are these pairs representing? <laughs> Opposite colors. Yeah, complementary. Well, complementary colors, right? Yeah. So we're mixing gray. So we've got, oh, that's not going to work. We've got alt blue and burnt sienna. We have viridian green and alizarin and crimson, which is a red. So this is blue and orange. And then we've got, um, this is Quinn red, phthalo blue, yellow ochre, which is not a color we've used very much before. So these are, these are the last one has got three. Yeah, well, that's because I have to mix a purple. If you have right. dioxazine purple, you can use it. So, got you dioxazine purple but often you have to mix that right uh, you can use so, a few Leah, uh, yes Leah, for the green uh, i have a different green actually cobalt green and uh, yellow green what know? are the and pigments i don't have the pigments. i don't know the pigments to be honest it should say on the it should have a it should have a number on the yeah it says 161 and 156 161 pr or what's the, what are the letters for that? It, it just mentions yellow blue and cobalt green. There are no okay. letters before the numbers? No. But no. Um, yellow blue, it's 101 and 160. Well, 101 is an earth red. What, what, were, what were they? 161. I don't think those are your no, those aren't, I don't think those are your blue pigment codes. Yeah. Um, I would say try cobalt green. Okay. Is my first. And for this red, and for this red, can I just try, try the pure crimson red instead of this? this sure, it'll this probably be lighter and you may not get the dark. Yes, absolutely. Try the crimson. Do you want a cool red? Absolutely. Okay. All right. I have the so these red. are right. So when we're mixing grays, these are complementary color pairs. The first one is blue and orange. If you remember, burnt sienna is kind of a, and burnt umber are both, they could be either red or orange. That's kind of nice, they're very versatile. Viridian green, it's green uh, plus red and purple plus yellow. So we know when we put these next to each other, they pop each other forward, which is why oh. sports teams and other things have them. When we mix them together, they make grays and they make different grays and um, kind of very beautiful grays. So I wanted you to experiment a little bit. So you'll need a bit of white here on the side. Let me take a picture of this so you can see it. Yeah, better, better needy. 
good. Uh, here, hold on. I'm going to bring this down for just a second so I can photograph it. So you can see the colors a little better. There we are. Good job. All right, so now our, and this is kind of fun and I think easier than what we've done in the past. You'll start, and you probably want to start with your palette knife if you've got one. Where is my palette knife? I just had it in my hand. This is what, ah, oh, there, wait, what did I do with it? <laughs> you want this at the ready? Ah, oh, here's my palette knife. All right, so I want to make sure my palette knife is clean. I'm going to bring this down just a little. I'm going to mix a little bit of burnt sienna with a bit of ultramarine blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white to it to see what kind of gray it makes. And if you feel like your gray is too orange or too blue, that means you just add a little bit more of the other color in. I'm going to add a touch more orange in here. Leo, is this going to be for the shadow? This is going to be for most of the cup. Oh. Because the okay. cup is really a gray. I thought it was red. It's really a gray. Okay. Right? There's no, I mean, these designs on top, if you look at what's happening, if there was no, yeah. So we're, we're practicing mixing the grays. Uh, and then try, you can try uh, uh, your green red mix. See what happens there. You might use all of them. So once again, you can see I have a lot of, as I put this in, I've got a white in, I've got a lot of red in here. So I can mix in a little bit more green to make it look gray. It'll be a different kind of gray. There we go. And then I'm gonna mix my red and my blue together to make a purple. <gasps> and then I'm gonna mix my yellow in with my purple. Yeah, let's put that over here. So I want you to mix all three, see what you like. Note, see what you notice about the differences between them. Everybody's gonna have preferences here. Well, so to way too much blue, so I need to get in more red and a bit more yellow. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you want your um, gray to have a little bit more red in it, right? So this is your, what you're learning here is how to adjust, how to mix and adjust your grays. So yeah, so spend a little time mixing gray. Oh shoot, we completely forgot to do the underpainting. <laughs> well, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right, let's very quickly, I'm sorry you guys, let's very quickly before I forget here, it won't take very long. Um, let's put this up. We're gonna do an orange underpainting. So you can either use burnt sienna or you can mix cadmium red and cadmium yellow. Um, where on earth is my, here we are. I'm just gonna use for the sake of expediency. Shoot, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm like having so much fun mixing gray. I completely mixed it, missed a step here. It's okay, Leah. We'll just add it to the list of, you know, don't forget to glaze. Don't forget, don't forget to glaze. To <laughs> don't exactly. forget to record. Don't forget to make the underpainting. Are you recording? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm guys. I'm, I'm, I'm only saying that to Leah because she's basically the queen of glazing and she <laughs> and never the forgets, to forgets glaze. it. Yeah. But somehow, yeah. right? Yes, yes. It's like her thing. All right. So uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to make sure that my brush, I'm going to use my thick brush as always. I'm going to make sure I'm going to put this, let's see, somewhere here where we can see. I have to do. Where do we see it? All right, you're just gonna have but to watch. The you cannot. Right. So I'm gonna take like just straight paint. Notice my paint is sitting on my brush. My brush is dry enough that I can have it in here. And I'm painting in the uh, the fives. So the five is here. The five is here. The five is here. 
about to there. There's a little bit of five here. And then really the five is out here. Notice here's where I'm, I'm really adding in my lost edge. We didn't draw the shadow. Uh, I asked you to draw the shadow. You missed oh, that. I missed that. You can pop it in. Just pop it in really quick. It's super easy. Compared to everything else, it's like nothing to draw. Is, is this red and yellow for the underpainting? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm using transparent. I'm using a burnt sienna, but yes. Okay. In re you can also use red and yellow. You want it to be dark, right? So I'm showing you where the fives are, where we want the paint to be really heavy and dark. Yep. Ske Sandra, you can probably just sketch it in with your paintbrush. I don't think you need to draw it in with your okay. handle. And then here it's dark. So do you see the places where this is dark, you guys? This whole side is dark. And then in here, it's like pretty dark. Oh, hello, Hermes. Hello, my little troublemaker. Hermes is fugitive. Hermes is fugitive. <laughs> Always fugitive. Hi, buddy. You had a, yeah, you had a good night, didn't you? Mm -hmm. He's so sleepy. <laughs> Does he sleep through the night? Uh, he sleeps through the night. He gets up at like five. <laughs> oh, that's pretty early. Yeah, but I get up at five. So I think oh, that's, but that's different. Yeah, like he's used to. And then he eats and then he often goes back to sleep. Right? Oh, so it's probably a bit too early for him, in fact. Yeah. Well, he, he's, like, well he's the one who gets up, like not me. <laughs> Cats uh, like to... Um eat at dawn because that's when they would be hunting in the wild. Right, right. That's kind of what the sense I get from him. He definitely does what he wants to do. Um, so guys, with your lighter, remember to get lighter, you want a little bit more water on your brush. So this should be a little bit lighter. See how I've got more water on my brush and here too. And then uh, let's see this, we can right about here is where we can have this kind of three-ish, four-ish color up in here and there. I'm looking to see if there's anywhere on the handle, a little bit of the handle like this. So this is like our four and maybe our three. And then I'm going to dip even more water in my brush to do, ah, yeah, even more, even more water to do the lighter areas. It's okay if the lighter areas are a little bit darker. And then same with the background, Not a little bit everywhere. Essentially, you're kind of like toning everything that's light. And then you're really just making sure you can, the darks are emphasized. I'll take so you're using, we're using several shades of orange or just? Uh... Yes, yeah, several shades of orange. Yep. Okay. Yep, several shades of orange. And all you're doing is just getting more water on it as you get lighter. You're adding more water to your brush. We're making sure we have coverage everywhere. Let me take a picture of this. Whew, can't believe it. Like totally forgot that step. I would have gone to the painting and been like, oh, this is a disaster. Here, hold on, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit for a second so that I can photograph it. No. <clears throat> You can still kind of see our lines, but they're gonna disappear. We should kind of lose this edge here. 
I'll put this up for a few more minutes, more minutes. I really have a fondness for the coffee cup because I, I like coffee and tea, like wrapping my hand around that cup. Clear. You know, I stopped drinking coffee. Yeah. But I used to be completely addicted to it. Then I stopped because of chemo, but it's one of the things I look forward to. Again. I bet your sense, well, and a lot of coffee is smell too, right? Like the smell of it. Yeah. I don't know why it put me off. Oh, I can imagine. Actually, I stopped drinking coffee for about three years. I just recently and started again. So why did you start again? Uh, because I taste, I went to a coffee tasting and I tasted uh, a coffee. I, I had like a coffee bean, like I tasted the difference between African beans and Colombian beans. And uh, the differences were so... I loved it so much that I, I started going back to coffee, but just briefly, you know what I mean? Just like, I don't drink as much as I used to. Um, it's purely the smell and the flavor. It's a lot for me like wine. Like I love uh, the, to, to sort of experiment with the different wines and, and I cannot believe how, I definitely have a preference towards uh, Ethiopian beans, which have a more fruity oh, really? taste. Yeah, they have a more fruity. But is that Arabica? I thought Africa was more robusta. Mm -mm. Ethiopia, it just depends on where you are in Africa. Africa is huge. Um, and Ethiopia Yeah, but uh, usually, this, uh, huh? usually they come from Latin America. Um, Actually, coffee was invented in Ethiopia. Yes, the coffee, it might yeah. have been invented with Robusta. Uh, I don't know if it's Robusta. All I can tell you is it's a gorgeous bean. The Ethiopian beans are freaking amazing in my view. Like, and, yeah, like 10 years, but like Blue Mountain. What can you tell us about it? Okay, well, I learned something from George. George, come here to make sure I get it right. Okay. George found in his class, he was told recently that it was an Ethiopian goat farmer. Yes, yes. yes <laughs> that. Goats. And he gave them like a mixture of coffee and warm water and then it made them work better. Well, no, it, it work, wasn't, it wasn't that. The story is he noticed his goats eating these red beans and acting crazy. <laughs> that was like the first so step, right? So humans might benefit from this. <laughs> yeah, like, so he saw this Ethiopian goat farmer. Yes, that's one of the reasons I love coffee, but also the beans are just gorgeous. I mean, I particularly love fruit flavors. So you get like hints of nectarine and cherry and blueberry and blackberry and all these amazing flavors off those beans. I don't really prefer the South American beans. I, I find them too ashy in my mind but they also are great they some of them have nice yes. chocolatey chocolatey like you know marzipan -y flavors which i really appreciate but that was it it was like kind of tasting coffee like you would taste wine uh, they're big on that here tons of local roasters and and now so, i i'm obsessed i can tell you, i can tell you that the annika and i come from the country that drinks the most coffee in the world Yes. <laughs> I believe it because it's dark a lot, right? No, um, yeah, well, and and even like any workplace, you have you have two coffee breaks a day <laughs> uh, in the morning and in the afternoon, uh, because people need their coffee. Right. Also, Swedish coffee is the best in the world, which is amazing because it comes from Colombia. But for some reason, it's very, very good in Sweden. Yeah, it is. Well, it's how it they is. roast it. It's how yeah. people roast it, just like winemaking. Yeah. It's everybody roasts differently. We have a million little roasters here. I have four that I love and I buy all, I sort of rotate between buying them and they put tasting notes on their... They put tasting notes on their, pot. it's really amazing. It's like, uh, the, I'm, so that's that's what brought me back into it. Um, George? Yeah. Leah? Yeah. yeah. So when you put the, the, the orange in the cup, you know, we had it separated into different uh, numbers, but we put it into the whole cup or? No, 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 no. It should be the different This numbers. is only the five. Yeah. Five, four, two. Here, I'll put that up so you guys can see it. So the and uh, I want you to hustle. I'm going to give you five. I'm going to give you two minutes to finish this painting. 
So the part of the underpainting, because we don't really, because I kind of wasted a little time. We need to get back to our- I sent to my underpainting. What's that? Oh, you said yes. Okay, let me- I just sent you my underpainting. Yes. Let me see. And yeah, why way, are we you... using, sorry. Yeah, what's that? What? I'm saying Looks the cup is kind of white. So why aren't we using blue as the underpainting for the cup? Um, because it's warm and we're using grays. We're okay. using neutrals and grays on tops. So I wanted a little okay. bit. I mean, the other way we could do this and one day we will try it is a black and white underpainting. Like we will try okay. uh, what that's, that's what they call grayscale. I kind of debated doing mm -hmm. that here, but since everything is gonna be kind of gray on top, I wanted a little bit of warmth underneath. You could do blue, okay. but it would have a different, it would feel cooler. Um, okay. Looks good, looks good. Rashmi, I still think you need to bring out your coffee cup a little bit. Do you see how it looks kind of squashed in here? Yeah, yeah. So you need to bring it out a little bit more down, okay. across, and over. Uh, Natalia, that looks great. <laughs> it looks done. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sandra, nice. Just keep going. Get in your others. Sandra, don't forget to curve this line in. You've got it coming out like that. Curve it in. Oh, okay. Slightly. Not curve, angle it in. It's a straight um, line. So I'm supposed to continue by doing the orange. The values. The orange yep, yep. The values using more water. Anik looks pretty good. Something, Anik, this shape needs to come up and out a little bit more. So take your dark. All right. Yours is like, it's kind of collapsing in a little bit on yeah. this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see that? So mm -hmm. shape up. So this is where you start are able to start seeing and then I'm looking here. Yeah, I think that'll be better. You may need to angle this down a little bit too, but we can do that with the background. All right. <laughs> so much work to, to paint a coffee cup. And now we're finally, what, an hour and a half in, finally getting to painting the coffee cup. <laughs> it's all about the setup, you guys. <laughs> yeah, you would think it was an easy subject. But... It is, well, it, yes. And I've told you my stories about this. Um, Olga, nice, very nice. You can make. Leah, this is it better now? Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Rashmi, it looks great. There you go. You got it. You got it. Okay. Olga, don't forget your little darks dark here. Oh, Linda, very pretty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pleasing. It's so pleasing. See, I'm already feeling that feeling of warmth that you get from coffee. I bet Sandra, your sense of smell has been disturbed by the chemo, and that's why oh, you smell, don't like the it. Taste, it's right? horrible. Right, and isn't it everything like? And by the way, I think I need to get a little bit darker. I'm gonna get a little bit. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna make my. I was noticing everybody's. You're doing what I'm doing. You're not doing wrong. I'm gonna make this a little darker. It's not quite as dark as what's happening down here, but I want this a little bit darker. So see, I'm going in with a little bit more paint. Okay, now I'm gonna stop mucking with this because I want it to dry. So for the most part, you guys are gonna be using um, hard edges here when we start to work. Which should make things easier. Right, but there is one soft edge. There is one soft edge, it's where it's where this darker meets this lighter. So that will be a softer blended edge. So you might wanna practice. And if you want these, once you kind of decide on the grays you like, of course now all our grays are dry. Darn, here, push this over a little bit. So if you've got a tester, you can kind of test and see or just look at it on your palette, right? Make sure you're cleaning up. If you're if you're using your palette knife, make sure you're cleaning up your palette knife between. Now, what have I done with my palette knife? Ah, yes. I keep ditching my palette knife. I get um, busy, <laughs> and I constantly am ditching the palette knife. So when we get to the darkest areas, these dark areas, we're gonna mix. We're going to take one of these mixes to be your dark with no white. 
right? So you can decide what that's going to be. I'm kind of leaning towards burnt sienna, uh, sorry, burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine blue because it's kind of a warmish coffee color. So I might put that on here just to test it. Uh -huh. um, you might wanna try testing how your different grays look next to each other. You're gonna have to mix them again, darn it. Anybody finding a gray that they like? Anybody finding a particular gray that they're liking? Yes. What is it? Which, what is the mix just out of curiosity? Um, Which one do you like? Sienna and ultramarine blue. It's so beautiful, right? That's always my first go-to. Yeah, I also like the first one. But I like this dark one too. I mean, this dark one has a different, it's interesting. I don't know, this one's kind of pretty too. See, that's burnt sienna. Sorry, that's a Viridian green and um, olives are in crimson as a gray. So you find, so you're mostly gonna, which means that, so when you're doing, and you get to pick your background color, by the way. So as you're, uh, whatever you want. So as you're doing these hard edges, notice, let's see if I'm doing kind of a light, I'm just taking a color here. If I'm doing like the edge of the cup in the background, I'm gonna be often laying my, laying my, uh, say this is the cup edge. To create that hard edge, I'm gonna lay my, my thick brush here and pull back, right? That's gonna be a lot of what's happening. And then if I'm wanting to do a soft edge, I'm just gonna blend in. If I'm going between edges, I'm gonna be tapping that away, kind of pushing that. So anyway, you get to decide what colors, what color combinations you're gonna use. If you like, yes, I was thinking, and now I think we can jump back in and start painting. Now that we have what, 20 minutes left in class? Here we go. I, I, I kind of like all of them. Can I use I, all of them? Yes, you can, you totally can. Use all of them, use all of them. Also, once you paint this, if you want to, you can go back in and add the designs. I just didn't want to overwhelm anyone. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I just didn't want anybody to feel overwhelmed. Let's see, where am I, how am I gonna, oh, I don't need that. I'm gonna put this down a little bit. I know, I can't quite see it yet. I'm gonna put this up. I want you to be able to see, ah, there we go, a little bit. Now I'll move this up a bit. At Leah, sorry. I, I kind of missed one info, the dark part that you were like mixing with the... Um, it's just the same TV. different, it's, it's just, just the same. same without white. Okay, great. Yep, Perfect. yep. Thank you. So the darks are, that tells you also your darks are neutral. So you're learning how to make darks and also neutrals. All right, so if I want to paint, I'm going to use, for my coffee, I'm going to use the darks. I'm going to use um, the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue mix for the coffee part. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of, I wanna add a little bit of white to it to make it slightly, uh, maybe I'll add a little bit of yellow to it to make it slightly lighter and warmer for this part. So this part, oh, nope, that's not light enough. Here we go. I need, we need this, boy, that just does not read well here. I'm going to mix blue. I'm going to mix. Oh, this looks terrible. Stop, Sandra. Stop it. You don't know. You don't know <laughs> enough. This is watercolor, right. by the way. So oh, you're using watercolor? Yep. Oh, well, that's an entirely different thing. You know, know you I need know, to, right, right, so. I'm watching it up, but still I'm enjoying this. So. I honestly, I showed uh, a couple of people my Hermes painting and they loved it. So, oh. yeah. I, um, 
I tried to finish it, so I hope I didn't mess it up. It's amazing. All right, so guys, this is uh, just burnt sienna with a touch of blue so that it's slightly lighter because uh, this needs to be lighter on top. And I can see I even need to like, I might even pull that off. This needs to be lighter, but not that light. Just needs to be slightly lighter, mostly burnt sienna up here in this shadow that's up in here. There, hold on, since we're painting that, I'll show it to you. And then there's this kind of um, soft, I'm gonna mix burnt sienna and yellow ochre for this area. All right, you're not really gonna be able to see it until we get our gray in. So, so this is burnt, uh, this is burnt, um, sorry, this is um, burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine blue here. And then this is more burnt sienna and a drop of ultramarine blue to make this a four rather than a five. This is a little burnt sienna with yellow ochre. You can't really see it yet. And then my shadow, I think like Natalia said, I'm gonna change up the colors. So I think I'm gonna make my shadow, um, Viridian green and red. I'm going to use that color for my shadow. Where is? Where you is know, that? when you said we could use a dioxin purple. Yeah. Could we use a violet instead? A violet and yellow. As long as it's really? as long as it's dark. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's dark, totally. Okay. It's amazing how quickly I run out of these colors. So here we go. So here's my dark. Oh yeah, that's nice. So I have a dark, but it's a slightly different dark. I'm gonna bring it right into the handle because I've kind of, the handle is kind of a lost edge. Oh. Make that a little bit too wet. I'm using, I'm, I have a sort of damp, but not super wet brush. Right, and then in here. So those are my darks. Oh yeah, and I wanna bring it into this side. So I'm actually gonna bring that burnt sienna, sorry, that uh, Alizar and Crimson, the green red mix, I'm bringing in here, here. And that's it. And here in the middle. So here's, I'm sorry, here's what that looks like. So I brought that all the way in here. Okay. So those are my darks. Oh, oh. I'm gonna take a picture so you guys can see it. Come on, there we go. Come on, happy little coffee cup. Now, I have done coffee cups for the other two classes, but they are totally different coffee cups. So if you guys wanted to, um, hold on. If you guys wanted to practice this coffee cup idea, I can show you what we did in the last classes. Here, hold on, yeah, guys. Yeah, because I'm I was my... out playing football, I, I mean soccer. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I... I came back and then because my mum was at a different stage, I did that one. Which your recording. The recording. Oh, yeah? Which one did you do? The it was a it was a blue cup. Oh yeah, the blue cup. Here, I'll show that to you. And was that I, I, I now noticed that the blue cup had something in it and this one didn't, so I drew the right. lines like Oh, nice. Right. See, yeah, this yeah. is the blue cup. So if you want to try the blue cup, and I actually added designs in here. And this is the cup we did yesterday where the mixing is fairly similar, but the perspective is different. So this was, uh, so you can play around. I would say take them all. The blue cup is nice because we, we practice mixing a blue gray, right? 
All right. Okay. So once I've got these in, now I'm going to be going to my <laughs> my twos and my threes, which are all going to be grays. So as I Let's see, what gray am I going to use? I'm trying to decide which gray I like the best. I'm going to try the purple gray. I love it. Oh. Yeah, this is the one that's Absolutely. made from purple and yellow. I really Hello, like I that one. Oh, wait. So notice, that's pretty dark. Hey, stop it. That's pretty <laughs> dark. Yes, you all know who that was. So I'm actually <laughs> moving this over to my kind of three side. It's coming over here and down here. And I'm going to put it here too. And then I'm going to add a little bit more white to it to make it lighter. Uh oh, maybe too much white there. We'll see. Leah, yes. all the fives, they don't need to be the exact color, right? They just need to be fives. They just need to be fives, exactly. Right. I don't think anybody's getting the exact color. I think we're just, um, that's the fun of it, right? Like you can kind of play mm. with the values until you find what you want. All right, hang on. Sorry, I'm mixing more of my purple in the darker. Okay, so I need more white. Hey, get off. Stop it. <laughs> Did you guys get nothing but cat butt there for a second? I was like. <laughs> so you see how this is lighter. It's the same color, but it's lighter. So I'm starting by bringing a line down like this, and then I'm kind of blending it across. So that there's a transition, a soft transition from light to dark. All of this is being done with my with my Do we big have to brush. Make a cup gray. I mean, that's what we're mixing. You can do whatever you want. I'm just showing you how to mix. <laughs> I mean, we've spent the last two hour like mixing grays, so yes. I know, but- um... <laughs> I don't care, Cassandra, do whatever you want, honestly. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna get sort of gradually lighter here. Now, if you decide you want like a little bit more yellow in that, right? You can mix a little bit more yellow into this. You can tint your cups. Your cup kind of gets gradually lighter as it goes around. And as well, I have like As well, I've got like a kind of a three happening here in the handle. It gets a little bit lighter. And then I think up here as well. See how I'm kind of blending in. Notice that over here it gets really light and kind of bright. So I could, I'm putting in a little bit of ochre in with my, my gray here. I haven't dealt with the, I'm not dealing yet with the, uh, the small lines here. We'll go to a smaller brush for that. But here, I'm looking at, and I want you guys to look at your source as well. So you can see here, I'm kind of looking at the little changes that are happening here. Once I get in my basic shapes, I'm looking at the little changes. And then I'm gonna take an even lighter gray for here. If you're having trouble with your big brush, don't worry. Use a, you can use a smaller brush for that one. I'm just seeing what I can do here. Yeah, at this point, I think we're gonna need a smaller brush. 
So you can move to your smaller. Oh, it's, it's tough because I'm trying to, you know what? I'm just going to move my, I'm sorry. I'm going to move my paint away. You guys really need to see the source to see what's happening here. So now I can kind of come in I can see that my handle, I can see that I can still see a bit of my white side, but it's, it's darker. I don't know if you guys can see that as I'm, I'm sort of busily mixing. It's a little bit darker in here, but it's still lighter. So it's darker than the handle. I can also see that I can see the bottom of my cup. But everything up here is dark. Like there's real no there's really no edge. There is a little edge. You can kind of take a little tiny, you can add it, you can see there's like a little bit of that happening, but not that much more. There we go. And then we're gonna look at what's happening at the top here. So this top rim, don't even think about it. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> this is the first time Hermes has actually sat in on class and he's being kind of pesty. He wants my attention right now. So he's having to entertain himself. All right, so now I'm gonna take more of a slightly just tinted gray. So from here, about here to here, it's lighter. Stop it. Oh, Isn't that pathetic? Yes. Stop it. And then it gets light till about here. So notice it's not light. Oh, wait, I gotta bring that out a little bit. It's not light all the way around the edge. In some places, it's kind of dark. Hey, no. Um, sorry, don't mind me. So I'm going to get a darker version here. See how that, the darker version comes here and actually becomes quite dark. You could even get something that's almost as dark as the edge here. So notice here, and then it gets a little bit lighter. So I had a little bit more blue. So what, take each part of this and look at what's happening. I've got the source here so you can see it. It's really kind of dark until here. You see how we're starting to like place, I can see I got this. What I can see is I added this to into uh, light. So I'm going back in with my dark and I'm gonna carve this back out. See how I'm coming in here? There we go. I can bring my light out a little bit further. Okay, and then at this point, I feel like we really, before we get into any more detail, we really need a background. So I was just thinking quickly, maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think the, the base should be here? Blue, purple, I know we know, maybe purple. 
Uh, or we could do turquoise. <laughs> I'll do turquoise yeah, just because it's quick. Right, right. It's, I'll just do turquoise because we know it's going to work. Oops. Okay. So now I'm coming in here and creating. See how I'm taking my background. and creating a, a hard edge. Almost carving out. Here's where you can start fixing your edge and, I, and it's important here, particularly in the light areas. So this is an important technique. I notice people are a little bit afraid for good reason, right? Of like going up to the edges of things. Oops, so something has, yeah, there we go. Oops, and it looks like I, my internet connection is unstable. Hang on, I'll be back. Can you guys see me again? Uh-oh, darn. Hey, am I back to being here? Yes, okay. So notice that I'm kind of um, adjusting my cup using my background, which I can totally do. Notice that instead of being afraid of putting my two edges together, I know that this is the quickest way for me to showcase what my finished product is going to look like. So I'm once again, kind of all around laying my brush down, my big brush down. So now I can start adjusting things. This doesn't look quite right to me. I think it needs to come up a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go, starting to look good. Of course, I'm gonna leave you, I'm not leaving you yet. And give me a minute, you guys, and I will. And so see how I'm adjusting all the time? I'm using this to adjust. I can use my background to kind of adjust my shape. Whoop. That totally needs to shift out. I made this come in a little bit too much. So now, see how my cup looks a little bit awkward, a little bit sort of squashed. So I need, know I need to expand out what's happening here. So I need to bring that out further. So see how I'm not afraid to cover up what I'm working on, if it isn't working. That looks a little better. Now I can go in with my white. A little bit of turquoise in my white, right? And bring my white So Oscar, did you enjoy uh, doing the blue cup? Oh shit. Oh, he's not One here. Second. Starting to get there. Notice I'm going back and forth with kind of the background. I'm using my little brush now to really form the background. I'm adding in some kind of orangey yellow here. 
This looks warmer. It looks better. Doesn't the bottom on the right hand side of your painting need to go up a little bit? Yes. I'm just, I'll get there. I brought it out, then I brought it too far in. I'm adjusting everything. Sorry. Oh, what are you guys doing? I just want to make it really clear that no kitty abuse is happening here. Although <laughs> somebody would make you think. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yep, absolutely. It's easy to kind of lose your edges as you're going along here. Notice there's some really neat reflective things happening here that distinguish what's happening. So we're going back and forth. Let's see. All my colors are drying. So I'm like, what do I have left that's still kind of. Do you have your colors under a heater or something? They're just dry. I mean, they're just drying fast. Yeah, they dry fast. They just dry fast. Um, I don't know why they're drying so fast. But they are. That's that sucks. It's one of the things I didn't like about acrylic. That's what. I, yeah, I mean, I like it and I don't like it about acrylic. Sometimes I want to work fast. Uh, it's funny when I started teaching acrylic, I hadn't been painting in acrylic for a while, and it was an adjustment. It was a super adjustment to get like kind of back into it. Stop it. How did you keep warm without heating? It was terrible. We weren't. We were just freezing. And you so brought the pets in and you were with we the pets. We brought the pets in. So we have a, we have an Airbnb. We have a sort of, we live in the basement normally and we rent the upstairs of our house. But the upstairs of our house had a, um, has a fireplace. So we, we got wood and we layered a lot of clothes on and we just uh, sat as close to the fire as possible. And it's not rented out at the moment? It was not. Uh, now it's You're rented lucky. out to some poor people who did not get their heat back. <laughs> poor people. There. Uh, yeah, now it is rent. Yeah, it wasn't at the moment. It was not rented out. Uh, You're lucky because. Yeah, we are really lucky because we would have had to send people away. And that always feels terrible and give them their money back. And yeah, and where, and where would we have gone? Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was terrible. I actually thought I was going to lose my mind. I was like, I have never been so damn cold. And to people who, and I was talking to friends of mine who hadn't lost electricity and they were acting like, why are you so upset? And I'm like, because oh, I like this, it's oh, nice yeah, we couldn't go anywhere, right? Like we couldn't go anywhere. And it's <laughs> so dark. And what about the pets? What did they do? Well, um, we were just there to run interference with them. So like whenever he gets too crazy, uh, the basement was actually not terrible. So sometimes Muka would go into the basement so she could just get a break from him. Um, and when he gets, when he, but yeah, mostly as long as we're there policing them, is that that's like our main job. But they didn't keep each other warm, which is no, 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 no. They're <laughs> never going to keep each other warm. <laughs> they don't like each other. I mean, he likes her, but he likes her in a way that's know really to show it annoying. in a way that she likes. Yeah, yeah. I just think, yeah, I just think we're going to have to wait until, yeah, I think you're right. She did not mother him because she's not really a mothering type. And then he's wild. <laughs> oh, he's you know, every just time young. He he's just wild play. ass. He wants to he play, wants right? To play. He wants to play. And she's like, she's... no. <laughs> I didn't know. Some days she looks at me and like is like, thanks. Give you this long suffering look. Yeah, like why'd you do that to me, mom? But and I'm like, but I tell her he's good for her. He makes yeah, her going to make a life richer. Yeah, he's good for her. He makes her kind of perk up. Um, she plays more now. She was getting really kind of settled in her old age, kind of sleeping all day much of the day and now she is way more playful 
And uh, she'll, I, I like, as I told her, I told her yesterday, you're going to appreciate this one day. You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I talk to the cats like they're, like they can speak English and maybe they can. I'm just Probably like, can. you know that right now it's bothering you, but later it's going to be great. He's helping it you out. It makes a life richer, I guess, more interesting. Yeah, more interesting because otherwise it gets can boring. Can you guys believe work interrupted my painting? Ah, terrible. Oh, All right, so oh, you see how I'm like going back and forth here. I'm gonna stop working on this. I'm gonna take a picture. Okay. So you guys can see it. Oh, Diana, that's really coming along. Hold on and I will get. Yeah, I'm trying to adding more colors now. So I'm doing like almost bright color highlights. Yeah, yeah, cause you have to, to get like sort of more vibrancy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't consider this painting finished. Uh, obviously, I will probably work on it some more after class, but I want you guys to see, I'll just get a sense. And and yeah, because I mean, technically it's like 10 o'clock right now, but anyway, we're hanging on. We're going to go for another 15 minutes. There cool. we are. Um, yes. I got to make up for my work interruption. So Anique, something is looking off with these shapes. Only with yeah. this shape? Well, with the shape, I feel like we've lost. Uh, mm -hmm. Revisit. Take a look at this. Yep. I'm going to take have, a picture okay. of this and read. You remember I had to bring mine out a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a picture of these shapes so I that you can I think really. She, I should move the angle a bit up. Yep, like, yep, yep, absolutely. Flat. I had to do the same thing. So don't feel bad about that. I'm going to take a picture of the top of the cup so that you can really. Oh, you're skipping the bullet. Oh, kitties. Kitties are crazy <laughs> today. The kitties are losing their working. little minds today. And I'm going to do the same thing in the <sighs> black and white where I think it's even easier to see. No, he's Hold not on. coming to walk here. I'm going to take a picture. So Jessica, what are you working on? Uh, I am doing my that winter portrait? altar master copy. Yeah. Yep. She's coming along. She still needs a lot of work. I'm still under painting. Send it over. Okay. When we can, we'd like to see it. Yeah, she's still very much in progress. It's kind of nice to work on something longer because then I don't have to think what I'm going to do. And then sometimes I need to really slow down. Yes. yes, it's easier to sometimes just pick up where you left off without yep. having to think what to do. Absolutely. So, Anik, did you see me put send these out here so you can get these shapes right? This is the key Thank shapes. You. It'll help. Is anybody enjoying this? It's kind of nice, yes. isn't it? It's sort of, yes. um, the subject is nice. The, everything about it is kind of nice. And this whole kind of, it's okay that you lose it and you get it back. You lose it, you get it back. Um, you might also, this might also be a moment to try maybe glazing your, talking about <laughs> glazing. I'm just thinking this would be a nice thing for this particular piece if we glazed it, maybe a mix of orange, of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. So I'm gonna try that to see if that kind of pushes this in the direction uh, that I want it to go. I'm trying to get all my turquoise off my glazing brush which will be my big brush. So for those of you who don't know what glazing is, I'm about to demo that. <laughs> glazing is taking a lot of water and a little bit of pigment. So we have this sort of, like when you're doing your lighter values and see how I'm, it's like using a filter on your camera. So I'm glazing this because I'm thinking I'd like my gray to be a little bit warmer. 
I may go back and I might lose some of my edges. I like how this looks. And then when it takes just a couple minutes to dry, right? Then I either keep it and I go back and I lighten and darken. I, sometimes you lose an edge when you glaze. So you, you sort of neutralize things, you push them back, but I kind of like the color that this is. Oh, that's coming along, Jessica. Yeah. yeah. She'll get there. She'll get there. Here's what that glaze looks like. Now, um, a little bit more. Oh, but it looks great, Diana. Yeah, it's really coming, Diana. Thank you. So now I can come back in here, right, and darken. darken this so that that really reads nicely. Oh, did I send it over the wrong chat? No. No. Sent it oh, to the right. right chat. We saw it. We all so commented. Yeah, right, there the are. Can... Oh, wow, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's really coming. Yep. So Jessica's doing something that's really, really good to do but it's hard, it's probably the hardest thing they'll ever do, which is she's copying a master. Oh, I think it's like, you learn so much when you do you it. You learn so much. I've it's had the a hardest. fight with Winter Halter. It's like, he's such a fuckhead, sorry. He is a fuckhead. Yes, he's a total, oops, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, he is. He's a dink, <laughs> he's a dink. He's yeah, a he is. dink. <laughs> So you see how I'm coming back in and it's kind of lightening it. No, stop it. Um, coming back in, lightening, pushing my lights and my darks. Maybe I get excited and want to come back in, get a little bit more light coming in. If you work while your glaze is still wet, you'll get a little bit of that color into your final, which can be really nice. Notice that there's a couple of nice, in the dark parts, there's a little light edge around the very edge of the coffee. The dark rim of the coffee, coffee cup, there's a, a light edge in here that can help define, oh, stop. Somebody is such a damn baby. Is she cruel to you? I'm so mean. She, I'm so mean. I'm not paying attention to him right now. I'm actually, hey, somebody has to pay the kibble. Pay for the kibble. You, you be quiet. Did you put him in the cage recently? Maybe he's mad at you. No, he wants me to play. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. This cat is like a mystery to me. Actually, he's not a mystery. He's really obvious. He just wants me to pay attention to him right now. He's bored. He's easily bored, this cat is. So he likes to have. He's a baby. He's just a baby. Mm -hmm. I know, he's a big, luggy baby. But he's, he's cute. Yes, he is. He's a cutie. They all are. They make our life better, even when they're difficult. Yes, absolutely. They make our life, and they're better, well, I shouldn't say this, they're children on the call. They're probably easier than children. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way, children, but you're hard. Definitely easy. <laughs> you're hard, <laughs> children. We love you, you're worth it, but just barely. <laughs> My dad used to say that, you know, pets are like the kids who never grow up. So, right. Like, you know, but, and that is they're... always so special for uh, parents because like when you, when kids grow up, they just don't spend so much of time and they're not so happy to see their parents, but kids are like, pets are always happy to see you. That's so true. And they don't really, <laughs> and they're kind of dependent on you, right? Like they're a little yeah. bit like, they kind of need you a little bit. But yet it's not so difficult. You don't have yes, to take them to dance lessons or pay Right. Lessons. 
or uh, as I was saying, who is like they're so this? giving actually, like you know, you just give them yeah, so true. little, but they are like ready to give you so much, and they actually give us so much more. We don't even like without even realizing. Who are your pets, Rashmi? I used to have like there was a time we I had a dog and a cat together. Then later on, like you know, when I used to live alone uh, before my marriage, I had like a cat and three kittens. Oh. So yeah, I've always had pets. Yeah, so I was just thinking, like you know, you were saying that uh, because of the storm, they all of like both Muka and Hermes were staying together. So I remembered that uh, when I was really young, we had a we had an earthquake at our place, and yeah. um, we used to live on uh, like the second floor. We used to live in an apartment, and right. obviously we were like it was a very bad one. So we all ran out of the house and we forgot about the pets. And my dog was really. small she was a puppy that, at that time so she couldn't g- uh, get down the stairs so my cat used to like you know usually be very jealous of her and she like always beat her. he would always beat her up or something but that day she act- he actually managed to bring her down up uh, the stairs and you know he took care of her oh so we like okay when there's some problem they'll always stick together so yeah yeah Oh, he ensured that both of them came. That both together. of them and were okay. The That's so sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like a big brother, and he like you know, and he kept pushing his uh, her butt, and he's like you know, make sure that she could climb down the stairs. It was really nice. What a wonderful so. story. <laughs> yeah, it's dimensional. Yeah. Nothing is as yeah. right simple as we'd like to make it out to be. No. Oops, keep losing my. Notice how easy it is to kind of lose your edges. You have to kind of, it's easy to kind of lose your shape. You'll have yeah. to keep reshaping. That's okay. That's a really, that's normal. Notice that there's like two or three value. There's like three values in the handle. Okay, we could go on for quite a long time. Why don't you guys send it over? I'm going to send you where I am with mine. I want you to keep working on this, right? This is something you can keep working on. You've got the source. Here we go. Here's what? No. That's not what I wanted to do. If you want to, like I said, you can add these things in here. You've got a great base for it. Or you can just kind of keep the cup plain. Oh, yeah. Starting to come together, Anik. So, Anik, look at this shape. Look at this white shape. String it across more. Oh. Yep. Sorry, I know I'm like hard on you. Oh, Linda, nice, very nice. Linda, I just love your shadow shape. It's wonderful. Annika, uh, looking pretty good here. Annika, these are hard edges. They should be soft and everything okay. should be lighter going this way. Yeah. Wonderful, Linda. Linda, this might be my favorite mm-hmm. painting of yours in the... Oh, thank you, but not over yet. There's still it's a lot of over. time there's to ruin still it. Work to, there's still work to do, but keep working on these, you guys. Yeah, I kind of like it like that um, too. Already. I mean, you know, you could also just say, I'm just going to stop right here. <laughs> keep it yeah, like maybe. that. It kind of looks awesome. Yeah. So Sandra, keep like shaping. Notice it's easy to kind of I can't really background. shape anymore. Yeah, yeah. You might, with watercolor, it's tougher. Oh, um, Rashmi, there's no uh, light edge here, Rashmi. It's really, uh, I'll show you. There's no light edge between here and here. So that looks funny. There's a four just, and there's a five, but there's no white edge there. So there? just working sorry. here. Oh, sorry. There's no white edge here. You have a little white edge here. There's nothing there that's not there. It's five to four. Oh. It's a hard edge, but the difference is five to four. Oh. I've drawn this in so you can see it. Oh. And then pull okay. this out a little bit more. See how these need to come out? So yeah. use these shapes 
to figure out exactly where your cup rim should go. Okay. One, two, three, four. These shapes, like little strange pizza pies. Yeah. That's what helps us figure out. So you did the same thing I did. You kind of pulled it in a little bit too much on your rim. So go and really reshape those. I've taken a picture of this so you guys can see that shape. Just keep working. Uh, Anik, there we go. Now we're getting a little bit better. Yep. Um, I feel like, what's up here? Everything. Something is off in the perspective. This needs to come yep. out for, this needs to come down. See, this is up too high, angled up too high. So you need to bring that down. So yours looks like that's what's happening. I'm glad we finally figured it out. I was like, what is going on here? So this, yours is going like this, your light area, which is, which is making the cup look awkward. This light area needs to be bigger come down here look at that shape you'll get there and then then you need to kind of soften this curve a bit and and here right here this gets dark this top edge gets mm -hmm. dark see here uh, i i have i'm struggling to basically put it all there. yeah 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 it's okay yeah, and maybe you're just tired and you need to put it away and deal with it later. This is definitely a great lesson to go back to. Just, um, I, I never liked honestly saying painting the mugs and stuff like this. I, I always mess it up. So it's good. It's coming mindset. along. It's coming <laughs> along. Don't worry. Though that's why we're practicing it. So you can get, the point is not to be great. Anybody else want to send theirs in? I can send the last version. Yeah, send your last version in. You've seen. And then I'm going to remove this spotlight here. And I'm going to go to gallery view so I can see everybody. Let me see you all. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> send in your pictures. Let's see where we're going. Don't worry if you don't get this right here. This could be another hour or two hours of work to really get it where you want to. I love seeing everybody years, like stopping. Maybe. Uh, or not two, or bad, 200 maybe. years. So, Emma, I would say just the the best correction that was gonna, is going to help you right now is this one. So this shape is still going up a little. Whoops, sorry. This shape is still going up a little bit too much here. If you bring that white in around, it's going to help. But very nice. And by the way, Emma, love the mixing and the blending happening here. I really like that. Beautiful work. Beautiful work. You may want to, as you see, Natalia, nice, nice. Just keep working it, you guys. There's just more to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to send this over to Europe. Wait. Here's Diana's. Coming along. Really nice. It's a funny looking dog. He's a funny looking dog. He looks like a Muppet. Yeah, he really does. Happy dog. All right. All right. <laughs> Hold up your drawings. Oh, I saw kisses happening. That's right. Appreciate your mother. <laughs> Hold up your piece. Let's see where we're at. Not bad. I like the dog. Not bad. Oh, nice, Olga. You didn't even, Olga was so busy working on it. She didn't even send us any pictures. This is looking great. <laughs> These are looking really great, you guys. Great practice. Great practice. So remember, painting is a practice. It's not something we try to get right in one lesson. If we did, hold it up, Rashmi, let's see. It would be too easy. It would be too easy. That's not what we're interested in. Hermes is like, I am going to Kill her if she will not pay attention to me. Bye, you guys. We're done here. He, he <laughs> probably knows that you should be finished by now. He, he does know that, actually. He's like, dang it. <laughs> All right, you guys, great work today. Uh, next week, I can't remember what we're going to. I think we're going to animals next week. We've done two oh, still God. lives, right? We've done apples and like uh, cups. So now we're going to go to animals. And, Yay. Painting. Oh, and uh, we're going to do an right. apple tree with apples on it for beginning drawing. And Marie is gonna do another snow scene. So and for pastels. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you. Please do join for the acrylic basics class if you want to or catch the video later. 
uh, that'll be happening next week. And uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to announce and coordinators should let people know about this is that uh, I've hired a kids teacher, uh, one of my old students. Um, her name is Emma, she's 19 and she's fantastic. So for anybody who wants, whose kids, uh, the age is, is gonna be like roughly eight to 12 or eight to 13. Uh, kids classes are going to start in the middle of March on Sundays um, at the same time as pastel drawing. So perhaps if it's a battle over the computer, you win <laughs> and not your kid, <laughs> but there will be a video. So you will be able to see that later. So keep that in the mind. And also I've got all kinds of other plans for you guys. So don't worry. There's going to be plenty more classes where these came from. Great cool. work, everybody. Good, good, great work. We'll see you all soon. Hopefully see some of you tomorrow. Have a good weekend. Yep. Thanks, bye. Leah. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank Great you. Work, bye. Guys. Bye.